Welcome you to the uh, celebration of 60 years with the Church of Divine Guidance. Thank you for coming. You look marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. You look marvelous tonight. Tonight, our praise and worship, we're honored actually, have our praise and worship uh, be led today by Grammy Award and multiple Stella Award nominated recording artist, producer, musician, and choir master, Brent Jones. Brent's interest in music started at an early age, and when he was seven, he had his first piano lesson, and that would lead to a musical journey inspiring people around the world. God has blessed him with producing several projects, directing many choirs, performing in front of various audiences, and setting a long-lasting trend in the gospel music industry. Before Kurt Franklin, there was TP, Total Praise Mob, a group known for their hip-hop high fashion and beat set with significant messages of truth, words of inspiration, and dance moves that appeal not only to the youth looking for a different Christian expression, but people of all ages who love good music with the message. With appearances on major network TV shows like The Tonight Show and touring internationally to Italy, Nigeria, and other exciting countries, Brent developed, has developed a multicultural following across the land and now the music director, and he is now the music director at the Multicultural Valencia Christian Center in Valencia. Brent's a loving husband and father, he's sensitive, down to earth, loves to laugh, and will always be known for his seriousness about spreading the good news and encouraging the hopeless through his music. I have heard him before, he and his choirs, and you are in for a wonderful worship experience tonight. Join us in worshiping with Brent Jones. I know over these 60 years, it took some divine guidance to get you where you are today. I thank God for your pastor and your first lady. I just want to be a vessel. I spent a long time trying to be a star. And for whatever that did, God told me, I don't really need you to be a star. I, I called you to be a light. So I thank God. Hello. 
here was a celebration going on. Yeah. Is that what you're here for, a celebration? Yeah. Some of you don't know why you're here. You just heard it was some food. <laughs> oh, come on, I believe in telling the truth. When we get 60 plus, we don't care where we go, just as long as some food. <laughs> oh, no, I, I go out to eat every Saturday. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It may not be a restaurant. It'll be a funeral. <laughs> what you laughing at? I got the funeral homes on speed dial. I call them on Thursday. Say, what you got on Saturday? What church you going to? And have you ever noticed something? When you get older, old folk, we never go to the cemetery. We go straight to the repast. You ain't going to see us out there on that grass. We going to the repast. Oh, I'm just going to tell the truth. That's what it is. But they invited me here, and, and it took me a while to get over here. My wife was going to come. But me and my wife, we've been together for 60 plus years. You hear what I said? 60 years. What you clapping for? You don't know that helpful. I didn't say I was happy for 60 years. I just said I was with the gal for 60 years. You see, 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 see. When we got married, people only lived back then up to about 60 years old. We didn't know being married up till death really meant that. We thought somebody was going to go on week and expend, spend that insurance money. But that didn't happen. So my wife always liked to go when I like to go, but I know how to fix her now. Because you know a woman can't help herself. She can't help herself. I came out dressed just like this. And I call this justice. Just anything. I just put on just anything. And you know what she said? Where are you going? I said, I'm going down to the celebration. You going dressed like that? I said, yeah. She said, I ain't going nowhere with you like that. I said, praise the Lord. I'm going out. So if I got to come out looking like this, I will. My wife said it was your 60th wedding anniversary, and I told her, I know good black don't crack and good yellow mellow, but I don't think so. So I looked it up myself. It's 60 years for the church. Is that right? Get 60 years for the church. Put your hands together for 60 years. Church stay together for 60 years. That's what we here to celebrate. Now, how many of you are members of the church? That's pretty good. Now, now, how many of you haven't been to church for a while, but you came for a snack today? <laughs> and you believe this will renew your membership being here today? <laughs> Celebrate 60 years of the church. And I think the founder was in 19... 50, no, no, you said 53. That's not how senior say it. It's 1950 and three. The founding was in 1950 and three. And I think that was Clayton Russell Senior. Is that right? That's right? Give Dr. Senior a hand. 1950 and three. Went through some changes and lo, the latest pastor came along and I guess y'all wanted another Clayton, but you couldn't get a Clayton Russell. So you got another kind of Clayton up in there. Is that right? Get that pastor hand. No, 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 I'm gonna tell the truth. Cause the pastor is the only one that's a member of the church that you should let see, even though he can't sing. in the church sometimes is the music department. You can't let everybody get up there singing. They didn't come up to me one time and tell them about pastor. They won't let me lead a song. I said, well, you can't sing full round. If you can't sing back round, what's wrong with you? You can't keep the key. You can't keep nothing. And you got to watch out for them. You can't have it in church. You can see, this is, this is a rod of correction. I'll sit up there. But we're here to celebrate 60 years. Pastor, they say you're doing pretty good over there. Yeah, yeah. They say they like you pretty much 
coming in. You're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. Someone would, someone would say if you would stick to preaching a little bit more. Because you want to sing from the time you walk to the door. Everybody just singing, you want a new background for it. Then if they don't let you sing background, then you're going to go get on the congas and beat on them for a little while. Then you might go over to the piano. Sister Cookie, see, this is what, so pa see, pastor just don't understand. Pastor don't understand. Pastor, when there's somebody here, they call a direct trip or the direct toll. So you're supposed to watch them and do accordingly. That's the chorus. First verse, second verse. That, that's what that is. And then when you get one of them hooks, it's real good. Go fix it. Go fix it. Go fix it. That hook. Then when you count down on the hook, and you know you got three before you come out, she's going to give you the three before you come out. Now when it's time to come to the end, the right hand goes up with the open left hand, which means we cometh to the end. Now when they get to the end, Pastor, and there's a double fifth, that don't mean double black power. That means the song is over. You got to stop singing. See, since I was pastor, I prepared. I got a few notes. Just a few notes. This said, Pastor got a good sense of humor. Yeah, he do. Because he's married to cook. Y'all sit there like you want to. I'm no cookie. She said she half a loop. <laughs> she works down there at the University of Southern Compton. <laughs> hey, y'all been down there? They trying to push all the people out of there, making these big buildings. You can't even get a hamburger for less than twenty dollars over there. One thing, one thing, Pastor, because they used to be in athletics. He want everybody to be fit. So that's why I can't come to the church. Because if you look like he's taking a nap, he wants you to stand up and stretch. If I'm taking a nap, I earn my nap. And I'm meditating on the word. Let me sleep on it. Let me sleep on it. Let me sleep on it. I used to be a deacon. And if you're a deacon, a senior deacon, you know how to sleep and be in the word. Now the experienced deeds knew how to play it off. Like they was meditating. So they time it would help them. So experienced deeds go like this. Say that! So, so everybody in here right now, you understand me? This is the United States of America. And if you don't know your math by now, let me do a quick math problem. People get confused. In the United States, they used to come up to me and say, you black. When I grew up, you call somebody black, you gonna have a fight. Who you calling black? I pulled out my birth certificate. My birth certificate say my mother is a Negro, and my daddy was a Negro. Therefore, come on back to algebra and math. Negro plus Negro equal what? Negro. That what it was. Now remember, we in the United States of America. Therefore, Negro plus white equals Negro. Right on, President Obama. Negro plus Japanese, Chinese, Korean, whatever equals Negro. Negro plus Filipino, I've been trying to tell Tiger Woods, equals Negro. Tiger Woods talking about he ain't Negro with them big old coffee cooler. This way too, I got to get with some of your high yellow ones in here too. <laughs> Negro plus, I got engine in me, it's Negro. <laughs> Negro plus, I'm from Louisiana, I'm 
Creole, that Negro. Be trying to be what you not. Negro plus Latino. No, that's double Negro. We in this thing together. We in this thing together. All right, so that's where we are. We in here. So when you're talking about a Negro and you're talking about a church, if the Negro had a flag, what animal would be on the flag for a Negro church? It's going to be a chicken. We can't have funerals without some chicken. We can't have a wedding reception without some chicken. Chicken on your chicken? It's going to be a chicken. Some of us will eat every part of a chicken we can eat. We some chicken eating beef. And the chicken, so you see, you got to make that chicken right. The worst thing a doctor can tell a black man, you got to give up chicken, just take it long. Before I get out of here, I just want y'all to enjoy, have some more good years. Now, Pastor, nobody sent me a list. Is there anybody that you'd like me to send to another church? There's a couple of you that are causing a couple of problems in the church. Okay, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to do things on your own. And when somebody's wrong, you can't keep backing them up. You understand what I'm saying? Because some people get power when other people back them up. Where do you pray? Every time that man sing, you ain't got to back him up like a temptation. Sit down. Time he get up saying you.
The pastor will give some special awards and have closing remarks, and then we'll pray and uh, go home. The year was 1953. The month was October. The place was an empty theater on West Pico Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Such was the beginning of a vision. Here, the Reverend Clayton Donovan Russell, later years to be known as the Reverend Dr. Clayton Donovan Russell, founded the Church of Divine Guidance. The struggle had been hard and the trials many, but out of this small beginnings, great things were to come. Installed in the new, their new home, an old theater known as the Forum Theater, a small band of faithful, hopeful, determined, and loving worshipers slowly began to establish a new body in Christ, another church. Spurred by their dynamic leader, they quietly went out in the name of the Great Commission to bring in other disciples to fill the pews in this assembly of God. Soon there went out from this group another searching party. This time the searching party was looking for the, a church building to purchase. A church building therein to establish themselves for a permanent church home. This leader did not think that the theater was the place to carry out the full program of action that he had been dreaming of. He expressed that God is guiding us in a search for the right place in which to accomplish the work that the Lord had put in my mind to do. He said, when we find the right place, we will know it. Until he touches us and tells us, we will go on searching. As the Reverend Russell and his band of devoted followers continued looking for a new and permanent church home, his memory took him back 15 years into the dark past. When he and those around him had gone into the battle to fight for the will of God against great odds and unprecedented circumstances, and yet won with the divine guidance of God, we refer to the days when after long months and months of struggle, of prayer, of preaching, lecturing, writing, and trying to reach the souls of men through God's word, the Bible. The Reverend Clayton Donovan Russell finally awakened officials of city, county, state, and of Washington, D.C. to the fact, to the need, and to the justice of making it possible to have Negroes, colored people, or blacks enjoy employment in white-collar jobs on all levels of government, including the U.S. Employment Service. That struggle, that day, all his work and the struggles came to fruition. He asked for jobs and he got jobs. Many are now, these days, at the present time, are enjoying. The fruits of the present, I'm sorry, the fruits of the toil and struggle of this man of God, Clayton Russell, Clayton Donovan Russell, and his spiritual followers. It so happened that one day, as the search committee for a new permanent church home met to discuss the various leads, proposals, and propositions that he had manifested themselves during the week, one very special member of the church committee handed Pastor Russell a group of newspaper advertising clippings that she had taken from various newspapers. Being tired and worn, the pastor glanced through the clippings without much interest but absent-mindedly stuffed them in his pocket. On the following day, God's divine guidance, a voice spoke within the pastor, insisting that he look again at the newspaper clippings that he had stuffed in his pocket. This he did. One clipping then seemed to stand out from the rest. It appeared to his sight to have been a bo in a bolder print. <coughs> The pastor's attention was arrested. His eyes became focused, and a sincere seriousness came over the past, the person, as never before. Words aloud fell from tired lips. This must be it. Yes, this is it. This is the place for worship. This is the place to establish a permanent church home for God's people. His thoughts stirred in him into action. He called this very special member of the committee and stated to her his God sent conclusion and said that they should immediately take a look at this building. Excitedly, the pastor and his committee rushed over to the address of 1518 South Gramercy Place, Los Angeles, California. There was this beautiful edifice, a Jewish synagogue. The doors were locked and there was no person around to unlock and open the doors for their entering. 
With a forceful hard push on the doors, they sprang open like the wings of an eagle. It seemed as if the doors themselves were glad to that, glad that group had come by, and with open arms, they were inviting the group to enter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once inside the dark, quiet house of prayer, the pastor said he could still hear the whispering of some small boy speaking. This is it. The search for a permanent house of worship is ended. And in that self-same hour, all who were standing there knew that their search had ended at 1518 South Gramercy Place, that divine guidance had again led them and again fulfilled the need of his people. There followed many days of negotiating before the final documents of agreement were completed, even though Pastor Russell and his flock had only a small percentage of the money necessary to secure the mortgage, divine guidance placed a ram in the bush in a person of member, Sister Blanche Strickland, who offered willingly to negotiate a loan to the church organization for whatever the amount of money needed to finalize the transaction. This climaxed the months of prayer, struggle, anxiety, some disappointments, and some hardships. It is no wonder that Pastor Clayton D. Russell and his loyal followers accepted the God-given name of the Church of Divine Guidance Incorporated and wrote in its Articles of Incorporation under Article 3 that the existence of this corporation is to be perpetual. The years have rolled by. Many new members have been added to the church membership. Roll book. <coughs> Some came by way of conversion as candidates for baptism. Many came from other Christian churches of various denominations with Christian experience. And others came as associate members seeking to share at times the welcome, friendly atmosphere of having a home away from home. Others came to share in administering of the struggle for civil rights, social, political, and judicial justice for colored people and for Negroes, and for black American citizens. No matter what a generation may choose to refer to these people, as the issues are the same. The year 1993. Yes, the Church of Divine Guidance still exists at the same address of 1518 South Gramercy Place in the city of Los Angeles. And we do hereby certify under Article 1 of the Article of Incorporation that the name of this corporation shall continue to be the Church of Divine Guidance. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. We um, have some very special people here with us this evening, and we'd like to let you know that these are, I can't say enough about them, they've done marvelous things for the Church of Divine Guidance. And we'd like to honor them with these plaques. First person would be Boy. Dickey. Mr. Dickey, can you stand up so they'll know who you are, please? A lot of people don't know who you are. This is Mr. Dickey. We like to call him the father right now because he's been there quite a while and we all look up to Mr. Dickey. Okay. Come to meet us up on Sunday. We have a pastor here now. He's leading us to the right way. And if you follow in Christ, you have nothing to worry Thank you so much, Dickie. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Garner. Stand up, Ms. Garner. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> I just love my church. I love everybody in the church. And God bless everybody. Thank you for everything. Amen. 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 I didn't know if you wanted to tell the truth about that, but there are two of them. All right, our next honoree, Ms. Vivian Hyde. Ms. Vivian Hyde. We have a special recognition. Deborah Hubbard Stan, she just handed me this wonderful City of Los Angeles Certificate of, Res of Recognition is hereby presented to the Church of Divine Guidance. It has these wonderful words to say, and it's from Herb 
Wesson, yes. the president of the city council. You're bringing the law and making sure our name is out there. The government is aware of the good work that we have done and that we continue to do. Amen. Amen. And in closing, just want to acknowledge the committee members who made this whole thing possible. They got this wonderful room and place that we have in place here, and we're just so happy that they made it all happen. Yes. Amen. We want to start out with Herman Schultz, who was the Souvenir Program and Award Chairman. Another one of the folk that made this whole thing happen, Marcia Schultz, please come. And we have Jeanette Brewster. And then we have another banquet co-chairperson, Marion Clayton. Amen. Deep, we have the invitation chairperson. And that's Ruth Jacobs. And we also have Donald Jacobs. Yes. Associate Pastor Donald Jacobs, the banquet MC and treasurer. Please, beloved, we have the chairperson of this entire committee, and that's Mary Schultz. We're encouraged, we're excited, and we set the course for another many, many years of ministry. Church is on the move, we're happy. We just know that God is going to continue to take us from glory to glory to glory. Right. So the spirit that has been imparted upon you this yes. day, this hour, these moments, right. take with you as you go forth to your homes. We give God all the praise and glory, and we thank you for coming out and sharing this 60th anniversary, and you were in the right place at the right time because a special blessing is in your life when you leave this place. Amen. Amen. And then there's one other person I'd like to thank, uh, Carol Woodhouse. Thank you for... Thank you very much. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great time and this great people. We praise you, Lord God, for your goodness, the goodness of the, of the Church of Divine Guidance being around for 60 years. And we thank you for the blessings that all of us have received as being a part of the Church of Divine Guidance. Thank you for those that were honored tonight. Continue to bless them. Continue to give them long life. Continue to keep them healthy, Father. Dear Lord God, we ask that you bless us as we leave tonight. We pray that our homes are as they were when we left them. We praise you, Lord, and thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.